So what would you think are the biggest risks to companies in 2022? So there was a survey that was uh, uh, conducted by Allianz Group. It was conducted across 2,600 different companies globally. And all of the, or most of them, ranked cyber incidents as the number one risk to the organization itself. What's interesting in this, you can see that the pandemic outbreak is ranked in the number four. So people are less, uh, you know, less concerned about pandemic outbreaks, but more concerned about cyber risks. And this is something very interesting for us to see as well. And this is where the emerging of risks and threats come to us. But what are the impacts? So if you look at the impacts, look back at the impacts. Our impact is totally different from the IT world. So the impact of a bank uh, getting attacked is stolen money. So you lose some money at the end of the day. But our impact is safety incident because a huge, let's say, uh, explosion. And we care about the safety aspects of it. And this is our number one priority at the end of the day. Next to that is the damage to the critical infrastructure, production uh, losses, environmental impact, reputation losses, lawsuits. So we face loads of different types of impacts that can critically destroy your company and your organization and, of course, impact the country itself and the community you live in. So the impacts are very, very serious. And most of the impacts or most of the attacks nowadays, we can't distinguish for sure and verify that they are caused by normal accidents or cyber incidents at the end of the day. So this is the scary part. There are many cyber incidents happening, but we don't know about them. Nobody's informing us, nobody's sharing that. And nobody wants to share about his company getting hacked. That's another aspect we need to keep in mind. So let me take you through our journey. And this is the magical journey we have started and embarked upon in the different uh, years. So we started our journey with the OT cybersecurity in 2005, where we assessed our po posture. Basically, we depended a lot on third party consultants and uh, vendors, manufacturers. And in 2006, we have created our first cross-functional shared resource team as well. So this shared resource is basically uh, a cross-functional team between IT and OT, so we can speak to each other in one language. And in 2007, we started by adopting our first standard, which is the ISA 99. Now it's called the ISA 62443, which is the industrial standard for, uh, or the main standard for industrial cybersecurity, globally recognized as well. In 2007, we did the first assessment with one of our manufacturers or uh, OEMs uh, that provide control systems. And from 2008 up until 2014, we have done multiple gap closure projects where we see we can reduce the risks from that area. But we did something critical in 2015. We uh, invited independent auditors rather than bringing the OEMs themselves, the manufacturers assessing themselves, we got independent auditors in 2015 and 2018 that can assess what we have installed in place and find out these gaps that we face. And accordingly, we took the, uh, the risks or the identified gaps that were identified uh, in, in 2015. Up until 2022, we kept on closing these gaps with multiple projects internal and external as well. In 2015, there is also another big uh, impact or big change that happened in our organization. Earlier, we depended on uh, shared resources, cross-functional teams, consultants, then we have dedicated resources, mainly to focus on OT cybersecurity and get them understanding the IT systems, the IT certifications, and incorporating them into the OT world. And in 2019, we have established our CSMS, which is a cybersecurity management system in place, which helped us you know, manage cybersecurity uh, throughout these years. And in 2022, we uh, established our first visibility, full 24-7, 365 days a year, visibility into our networks and into our risks as well. So what challenges did we face? Was it an easy uh, journey? No. We were faced with many different types of challenges. The first challenge we faced was basically the activities we were doing are random, pretty random. We, we were doing well. We, we had different solutions in different areas, but we weren't organized. So we faced that organization issue. 
Second challenge we face is converging, talking to the IT folks. So uh, and this is a sensitive subject, but whenever we talk to the IT folks, we, we talk in different languages. So how can we align ourselves, understand each other from that aspect? And the third part, which is the most important part for us, is understanding our risks. So when you understand the risk, you're able to protect yourself from that risk that you're facing. And then the fourth one is protecting our legacy systems that have no controls, no security at the end of the day to protect these systems. And they're built differently than what you're used to. So most of the approaches that we have taken started like this. So it's just a spaghetti. We had different systems everywhere. We had different protections, countermeasures everywhere. But is it organized? Is it clear? Is the process sound? And this is what we have changed throughout these years. So we did that basically by adopting the 62443 cybersecurity management system in place. So this management system helps us to categorize basically all our activities into risk assessment, then into addressing these risks, and then lately into monitoring these risks. So with this being installed, we have multiple layers of defense and multiple layers of countermeasures. And we have made sure that our critical infrastructure is really protected at different angles when we see these uh, risks uh, that we have assessed. And finally, we have enabled our monitoring capability. And this is very critical and very key to maintain our security throughout the years. The second challenge we face is communicating with IT. So what, what did we do? We use the NIST framework. So basically, IT follows a different standard, which is the ISO 27001. And OT follows the ISA 62443 standard. So how can we communicate? How can we align on the activity? What is IT? What is OT? What's the difference between them? And how do we exchange services and inform each other? We use the NIST framework, which is a tool at the end of the day. It's a tool to translate our language between different domains. So with that being said, we started with the initial security requirements, such as antiviruses, firewalls, identity management. And slowly we have moved from the initial stage into the developing stage, into the defined. And fortunately, nowadays, we're in the managed stage of managing our cybersecurity. So we have the right solutions in place to counter for the risks that we have identified. And hopefully one day we can reach the optimized stage at the end of the day. So what does this mean as an organization? If we look at the organization from a bird's eye view. So we installed multiple layers of protection, different types of systems, right? So our maturity increased, but at the same time, cost increases. Money is important to the organization. We are a private company. We care about what we spend on. So at the end of the day, how do we justify that? How do we make sure we can quantify that as well? And a very important aspect as well, if you see the maturity scale, we started with dependency on third parties. Later on, we had part-time, part-timers uh, from shared resources. Then we have dedicated plant resources. And finally, we're moving towards a full cyber ops team supporting the OT infrastructure and the impact that it can have. So how do we quantify the risk and get the alignment from the management? We do a risk assessment. And by doing the risk assessment, we quantify the environmental impact, the production impact, the safety impact, and we give it a dollar value. And that's where we have a semi-qualitative and quantitative risk assessment being done. So we look at the different scenarios that can impact our plant and our organization. And then we look at the different threats that are uh, focused on us. And at the same time, we determine the likelihood. And then we quantify that likelihood with a dollar value. So if we spend five million dollars on protecting a certain system that can deter a risk of 70 million dollars, this is where we spend our money correctly. And this is how cybersecurity should start. It starts with the risk. It starts the same with the doctor. It starts with the assessment. So first, you have to work on the assessment, determine the risk, and then tackle this risk to bring it to an acceptable, tolerable level. So part of that doing, basically by doing that, we have taken our security into a much more um, controlled uh, manner. So by saying that, we have defined different security levels. When we say security level is the level of security we should provide to different types of systems. By saying four is the highest, one is the lowest. Usually four is applicable to nuclear power plants. 
uh, the less you go, it uh, goes to the oil and gas, to the power production, to critical infrastructure. So rather than having a monolithic approach where we have one security level for everything we follow, we have segmented that into much more smaller granular, uh, granular level and zones that we have applied different security levels. So for example, a safety system, should it have the same security level as a normal control system in place? What would you say, engineer? No, we should have a higher one, yes? Because the safety system can impact us drastically. So what we've done is segregated our systems into zones, something called zones and conduits. And these zones have been assigned with different security levels. And based on these security levels, we know exactly what requirements are needed. So I wouldn't install a firewall if I don't need it, if it doesn't bring back my risk, if it doesn't reduce my risk at the end of the day. So I wouldn't implement any countermeasure unless I have a justified reason to do so based on risk. The fourth challenge we face is protecting these legacy systems that we have. These systems, the controllers, are usually made for reliability. So whenever you need them, they should work. But they're not built for security. So the vulnerabilities keep evolving. And with an evolving uh, you know, domain and connections and connectivity to the internet and uh, IoT, the bigger the attack surface we face. So this is one of the key critical things that we have to keep in mind and know how to protect. So by doing so, we, we put the right countermeasures in place. So we have proper visibility for these systems. We have defense in depth approaches done. We have proper policies that are implemented. We also use signature based uh, systems such as antiviruses. We use non-signature based systems such as application, wire, uh, fire, uh, application whitelisting. And we also go into the uh, part where the AI is involved, we monitor different types of logs. So in the past month, I have monitored more than 200 million logs. Did I do it myself? No, I utilized AI to do it for me. And from this 200 million, I have identified 50 cases, 50, five, zero cases where I have to look at and put my attention to. So utilizing AI, the tools around you to help you monitor and secure your organization. So let me recap. How do you start your journey? So, number one, you would first dedicate the right resources. Second, adopt a standard, which is the industrial standard for 62443 or uh, the different types of standards. Conduct your first risk assessment and understand your risks. Know what you're protecting. And then later on, implement the countermeasures, be it from uh, data diodes, be it from firewalls, be it from antiviruses. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we need to control our risk and bring it down to a tolerable, acceptable level for us. And finally, to maintain your security, you have to monitor. And this is key and critical to everybody uh, focused on this. So by concluding, I just want to ask one more question. What is cybersecurity? Who can answer me? Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a really interesting presentation and great to hear about EcoAid's uh, cyber journey specifically. Once again, my colleague Mara is going to present a small token of appreciation. Let's put our hands together one more time. Engineer Dari al -Ajman. So that brings us on to our final presentation of the session. It's now my pleasure to invite Engineer Abdulaziz al Hamoud to present on ICS, SCADA systems, and cybersecurity. Join me in welcoming him to the stage. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. This is Abdulaziz Lahmoud. Uh, I work as a researcher in uh, cybersecurity and in, in multi domain, and uh, also work uh, at Quebec. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, uh, the. I would like to thank you to have the opportunity to stand uh, before you uh, to remark the cybersecurity event uh, for the second time. Uh, thank you also for the organizer who did the hard work uh, and ded dedication work uh, to gather us for the cyber uh, for more uh, to secure our uh, to know more about the cybersecurity. And we move forward uh, for a safe cybersecurity environment. Uh, in my slide, uh, I will talk about the 
uh, OT uh, to understand what the difference between the IT and the OT. Also, uh, the type of the security threats in the OT. Uh, I will mention and cover the vulnerability and why the vulnerability assessment and why we, know, why we need to know more about the vulnerability of our assets. And I'll give you some, uh, some real world attack uh, or, uh, or uh, to show you how, the, how it is, uh, how the dangerous of uh, attacks in the OTT environment. Plus I will show you some, uh, uh, some uh, movie, uh, interested movie, which, which cover the uh, OT attack. And you can see how it is uh, uh, difficult if we manage uh, the cybersecurity uh, and manage the security at our environment, how it is uh, very hard for the attacker or, or the threat uh, can gain their uh, uh, money or how they, how, how they can uh, make the damage to the uh, industrial environment. So when we talk about the IT, as we know, uh, we, have, we have computers, we have smartphones, uh, smart devices, uh, we do have printers uh, at our work to do a communication between our, uh, 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 between, uh, our colleagues. And uh, uh, this to send some emails, to send some uh, uh, draft or attachment in the computer, and it mainly uh, is about uh, communication and uh, exchange some information. And this is the type of the data uh, in the IT environment. But the scope in the OT, is, uh, the scope in the OT is a little bit different. The all sector involved extension operation include uh, drilling and machine, uh, such as temperature and pressure and the production uh, matrix. OT components uh, in the industrial uh, include the SCADA system uh, to find to have the real monitoring uh, in the planet and the sensor to have the data collection like uh, we want to know about the, uh, the temperature or the uh, temperature or the uh, to, uh, to monitor the tank and uh, to know if, if, any, if, if any suspicious uh, activity in the uh, industrial planet. And uh, the, the priority in the IT, as we know, we want to know, we want to have the confidentiality of the data since we are, uh, we, our communication is about data. And uh, we want to know, we want to ensure to have the integrity of the data uh, plus the availability of the data. But in the OT, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, so the priority in the OT uh, is, to, uh, 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 is to have uh, the, the safe, the, the human safe. We want to know, we want to ensure that the environment is work and ha, uh, have high uh, availability to run the business. And if any, any damage happen in the uh, OT, de uh, OT devices uh, or OT environment, it might cause a very big uh, issue at, for, the, for the employee plus the citizens uh, in, in around the uh, planet. The industrial control unit is a missed mind of all industrial control system and virus field that use technology in their manu uh, manufacture. If these important devices are hacked, this might lead to op uh, operational disruption damage and uh, damage for the business, especially since the recent years uh, cybersecurity attack have been increased uh, by high percentage. One of our concern is, uh, is when the attack targeting control unit or breaching critical core technologies in operational, such, uh, con, con, uh, such the electricity or transportation or goes, uh, gas or power station. Uh, even if the organization or company is not targeted, it can be damaged by neighbor attack because it shares the same technology across the industrial sector. On the other hand, there are also internal threat and direct, uh, 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 and direct employee or contractor with a direct access to the network cause significant damage. Also, the human error in major concern can cause uh, damage just like serious uh, uh, as a cyber attack. So I would like to, uh, to ask a question for any of uh, the uh, candidates. 
uh, why, uh, who knows why we need to uh, consider the vulnerability for our asset? Why, is, why the vulnerability is important? Anyone can participate for this question? Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, the attacker usually uh, take advantage of the vulnerability of any asset, even if, uh, whether it is IT or OT. This vulnerability give, it, give a chance uh, for the attacker to take privilege and to exploit those devices and, and, uh, for, uh, for his, uh, uh, for his uh, own good. So uh, if, we, if you consider uh, our, our devices to have, uh, to, have the, uh, to, to know the risk of these devices, the risk of the, and each uh, OT device at our planet, uh, to see the compo component of it and see how, how the communication from this device to other device to understand how it's work, we're going to know and uh, discover what the gap or the vulnerability or what the risk behind this OT. Uh, once we once we once we know the risk of this uh, device uh, and understand how it works, then we can uh, do a plan uh, to reduce the risk of this device, and we do a plan to uh, protect this device. Whether we how we going to deal with this device, we going to use it, and we put for it uh, an expire expiration uh, date. Uh, so once we maintain those vulnerability. Uh, we give a level, more level, uh, or we make a stronger level for our asset or planet, where the attacker can uh, have more time uh, in in a, in a way to plan how t how he going to attack or how can how going to breach our uh, planet. And we still uh, for the vulnerability system, for the vulnerability discover for the, those devices, the new devices, it can be uh, by a different tool, uh, as uh, Mr. Dari mentioned. We can we can use the uh, tools uh, to do penetration uh, uh, penetration uh, testing or vulnerability assessment for each OT devices with careful, as uh, as the IT is a bit different uh, when uh, than OT, because if we did the vulnerability assessment or penetration testing for OT. We might, uh, we might make uh, a serious damage uh, for those devices. So it's better to do it in a virtual environment or separate isolated environment where you can do your test uh, as much as uh, you want. And consider uh, to do uh, also the migration uh, test uh, in the virtual environment before you do it in the live environment. But we, have, we are facing also some issue in the, uh, in the legacy system. Uh, as the legacy systems in uh, some uh, of OT environment or planet, uh, it is not updated, and uh, it, it is already cost. Already we already we uh, depend on the, uh, in the uh, what this OT device uh, legacy OT device is uh, produced for us. Uh, but what we can do if if there is no more support, uh, no, we don't have support for from the vendor for those legacy system. What we can do, anyone can answer for us. What we can do for legacy system to secure our planet? Yes, yes. That's right. Another answer. What we can do for legacy system? We can isolate, isolate those system from our uh, uh, environment or, the, or our, our live environment. That's right, but there is also another. That's right. So uh, the, 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 right, the right answer is to isolate the uh, system or the legacy uh, system or OT from our live environment as our uh, colleagues answer. And uh, to do this, we need to have the inventory of our legacy system. We take it as a serious, because uh, this legacy system, sometimes it's, uh, it's not in our mind as we are doing a new project at our environment. So we need to consider legacy system, and we have, have a good inventory of those uh, legacy system. And we need to also to study the risk of those devices, because if we don't know, uh, if we don't have idea about the risks, we will, not, we will never uh, secure the device, or we will not uh, secure it well. So we need to have a study and to know about the risk of those devices. And then we need to find out if, if, if there is any uh, update we can use uh, for for uh, for these devices. Uh, if we can uh, update it, as we said, we need to do it in separately uh, or test environment before we make it live. 
and, uh, and we want to ensure also from now that any OT device we want to buy at our planet, we need to ensure about the vendor who going to uh, com commit the update, uh, commit by giving us the update and make our devices uh, uh, updated. Uh, and uh, we make a plan for uh, the devices when, it is, uh, when, the when the support is expired. Here I'm going to show you uh, a real attack happened in an uh, Iranian company last year with a, uh, with a malware called Angry, Angry Bird. Who heard about Angry Bird? Angry Bird, which attacked the OT, de uh, OT devices in Iranian company last year. Okay, uh, let me show you uh, the uh, how, the, how the attack happened in OT devices or OT planet. Uh, I will show you, uh, this is, uh, this is a, a real video. I have, I have uh, found it in the, uh, in the internet. Uh, the Angry Bird attacked this company, and you can see this is uh, OT devices, see the hardware, and there is employee uh, around this area. See the fire, uh, once where Angry Bird attacked this uh, device or the, the hardware or the equipment, See the fire start uh, uh, getting high, and the employee, uh, some employee wear mask, and they are, they are tr trying to leave the place. This is happening on 27th of June. Look at the fire, and imagine how, how the cost and how uh, is the impact on the uh, company. Uh, how, how, how they will going to maintain it after this. Uh, I think there is no, uh, as we see, the human is left earlier before this happened. So there is no human uh, lost, but we can see uh, this uh, going to uh, majorly or significant impact the company and uh, it is uh, the availability of the company. Uh, this is, uh, the, so the Angry Bird, uh, let, me, let me give you imagination how the Angry Bird reached to this uh, planet. Uh, the, angry, the Angry Bird uh, was, uh, the, this attack was happened by uh, a group uh, or the or big organization uh, and it have history of uh, attacks. They, they take the advantage, uh, they, they, they were looking and finding what's, what's the gap for this uh, company and when they found the uh, vulnerability they was, they, wa they was taking advantage of their vulnerability and they uh, create a malware specifically for these devices to attack it, where they can uh, make their business slower and impact their uh, finance. And they were, they were not considered any, any life of the human. They, 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 are, uh, they, they have a goal and they need to do it uh, in either way, whether there's someone died or no, they, they don't consider. Once, once, we, once the attacker want to attack the OT environment, uh, they know the risk of the human life of these attacks. Uh, so what we, go, what we need to do and consider to secure our OT environment. So the OT environment is a little bit, uh, as we said, it is different than IT. So we need to have network segmentation for, for the OT devices. And we need to consider the uh, last update, latest update for those devices. Uh, we need to have a very good asset inventory uh, where, where it's mentioned, this when we bought this device, what is the lat latest update, and when the support is going to be end uh, for this device. So we can uh, do an action before the support is ended. Uh, of course, uh, the, tra uh, the employee need to have uh, good training to how to deal with those devices and how, how they can batch those devices with the latest update, plus to know the protocol for each device, uh, what, need, what the protocol this device need or require uh, for uh, running the business or, or to communicate with the, each devices. So he can uh, uh, find out if there is any new protocol discovered while, he man while they're monitoring the uh, traffic uh, uh, between the OT devices. If there is a new protocol discovered in the monitoring system, that means there is suspicious activity uh, in the OT uh, environment where the, the, the trained, the very well trained employee can do a, a, a response uh, uh, to this uh, suspicious activity before the attack happens.
or before the damage happened. Of course, uh, this is under the uh, response, uh, incident response plan. And in addition to that, we need, uh, once, once we talk about uh, incident response plan, once we talk about the update, and we need to update these devices, we need to know about the devices, we need to do some change management, this going to be under the uh, policy and procedure. The policy is and the procedure, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is very important for the uh, environment, uh, for the uh, OT or the industrial environment. This going to be going to highlight or or going to help the employee to walk to walk as as a plant from the uh, scout holder, scout holder, and the owner of the business. Uh, the the procedure once the procedure is fit for the business, uh, and I mean. Uh, once the uh, and I mean this word when I say fit because every company or every, every uh, environment have different process and procedure for the OT devices and how manage the OT devices. So once they have a very good uh, policies and procedure fits this uh, company needs, it's going to be slow the attack from our environment and make our business uh, more uh, stable, stable and conti uh, continuously. I'm going to show you uh, an example I have seen in the uh, three months ago uh, from a superstar uh, movie Jackson. Jackson, I, I, I'm not, I know that you are familiar with Jackson, uh, where uh, where his uh, role to protect the industrial environment, a refinery or oil and gas environment, uh, from a military attack. As this movie uh, have two stage of attack. The first stage, they were trying to attack it in cyber security, and, and, and as a cyber attack. They, the, the, uh, the attacker have spent a lot of time to attack this refinery in a cyber, but they, um, they failed. So they go to the second stage by military. They went to the refinery to attack this refinery and, have their, uh, and to, to steal the oil but they also failed because the cyber, the security was uh, there, plus the good uh, policies and procedure uh, also was there. I will, I will, I will show, you, show it to you now, uh, briefly. It's going to take uh, two minutes, inshallah. So this is the refinery. And this shows how they come to the military. Hey, 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 hey. Slow and put in the hole. Okay, this is the, the trial of the movie. Now we're going to uh, look how this mo how uh, the policy and procedure protect this company. Now the, the attacker, as I said, he failed to do a cyber attack, and he trying to attack this refiner, but he failed. The military come to the uh, refinery, the, 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 the attacker come by using a military to attack this refinery, and look how they failed also to have to steal the oil they, they, uh, from the police and procedure and the cyber security. Uh, the, the boss of the attacker wa were stuck in having the encrypted key to uh, open uh, the pipeline to refill their uh, uh, ship, ships. The refinery is protected by quantum encryption. That's not happening without the dongle. All right, Professor. I need you to get the oil flowing. Where's the dongle? We are going to steal all oil. Stealing. <laughs> I 
think everyone is stealing from this country. We buy it. I also need the code, please. It's a very complex process. This is what I want to show you. She told him it is very complicated. And it's really complicated because the cybersecurity have fit uh, Police, uh, fit uh, cybersecurity and uh, policies and procedure for their OT environment. Now let me show you how the attacker can take advantage of the IT once the IT is not secure. I'm so sorry. It's not going to be attacker involved! Her phone! Is it her bag? Look at the bag. So, so here the encrypted key was in her bag and he were asking about her bag. They don't know where is her bag. So the, the only way to find her bag is to find uh, his, her cell phone. So the, the, the boy here or the guy here ask, uh, ask them to trace, their, uh, trace her phone. Uh, she forget to, uh, she forget to uh, close the, or turn off the tracing in her phone. So they found her phone. They, they don't want the, her phone, they want her, her bag. So they find her phone. It's like we got ourselves an old fashioned standoff. Look, here's your tracking device, but you don't know where the girl is and you're not gonna find her. Because they don't want her phone, they want a bag. So they want to open the fire. I'm only here for the bag. The bag? Hey, where are you going? Yes, that's how mad I am right now. What's so important about that bag anyway? The bag has the USB key and the password to open the flow from the refinery. So they took the bags by tracing uh, her phone, and the encrypted key wa was in her bag. Now they will take the bag to the refinery to, uh, to open the pipeline where they steal their, uh, to steal the oil. So uh, what, what I would like to uh, highlight here, that this company or any other company, if they want to secure really secure their environment, depend on the business and how the critical of the business. They need to consider the cyber security carefully and they need to uh, uh, stay with the uh, stakeholder to understand how the business is run. What is the risk? What is the, what is, can impact the availability of the business and what is not uh, need to be considered uh, to secure? and how, how much we can uh, lose and what we can lose and what we can't lose without it, the business will uh, stop. Uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this case, once we, have, uh, no, once we have the all information about the uh, risk behind and what is the risk uh, related, uh, related to the environment or the business, we, go, we need to have a plan, uh, a proper plan uh, to secure the OT devices, the IT devices, the plus the OT devices, and have uh, policies, fit policies and the procedure to maintain those devices, to be to be updated, to have this vulnerability on it, to uh, to close the gaps, and make the all IT and OT devices available 24 hours. I would like to thank you. Uh, I have in, I have reached the end of the slides, and if there is any question, thank you.
So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our presentations for this session, but we do have um, a fun panel lined up for you. So, I'm delighted to welcome um, Dr. Suleiman Al Hasawi to the stage, our moderator. And we're going to have four of our speakers from the past two sessions coming back to the stage as well. So, can I welcome Dr. Sridhar Deepu, Engineer Abdulaziz Al Hamoud, Engineer Dari Al Ajmi, and Engineer Ali Al Anizi back to the stage? for this panel on ICS SCADA systems. Thank you. Can I just say, when the time comes for Q&A at the end, please just raise your hand. We'll try and get round to as many of you as possible within the time frame. so just raise your hand when Q&A comes at the end if you want to ask a question. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Suleiman Hasawi. I'm founder of Zero in Tech um, as a company. We do ICS and uh, OT cybersecurity. Um, I do many things. I write blogs and articles about cybersecurity and OT security. I also uh, podcast in YouTube and interview professionals. I also offer training and consultation. So addressing uh, the significance of today's panel, our world is rapidly digitizing and with it, the convergence of IT and OT is gaining momentum. The protection of our industrial control system is not just about securing data, it's about ensuring the safety, reliability, and continuity of services that millions rely on daily. This panel brings together bright minds to discuss, understand, and collaboratively find solutions to be pressing challenges in, in ICOT cybersecurity. So thank you, and uh, let's embark on this enlightening journey together. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so this uh, panel is 30 minutes. Uh, we have eight minutes introduction for each guest, for each speaker, and 20 minute, tw 22 minutes uh, question and answers. Um, our guests feel free to ask any question, or I will go ahead and ask them. Um, so who we start with? Uh, could you, uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dari, uh, Mr. Dari Al uh, Ajmi. He's uh, a head of. Uh, could you give us an introduction about uh, two minutes intro yes, introduction sure, about yourself? So yeah, start. I'll just repeat. My name is Dari Al Ajmi. I'm handling the OT cybersecurity uh, uh, for Equate Petrochemicals. So we produce. Uh, petrochemicals such as uh, plastics, different types of plastics, raw materials for plastics, from polyethylene to ethylene glycol. And uh, uh, I take care or, uh, of Kuwait's site and of course of Germany's site uh, as well. And we have other plants in uh, North America where we support these uh, sites from the OT specific uh, cybersecurity part. Yeah. Great. Uh, now we speak to uh, Mr. Ali. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, my name is Ali Lanazi, and I work as a security architecture in National Bank of Kuwait. I know that uh, National Bank of Kuwait does not have any, you know, ICS infrastructure, but uh, this I do it as a uh, interest. I have done a uh, research back in 2018 and IoT and how to improve the cybersecurity within the IoT uh, infrastructure within Kuwait. So my research was about, you know, how to introduce the uh, cybersecurity controls towards something like, uh, you know, Sugul Mbarkiya, uh, smart cities in Kuwait. So from that point, I have taken Science Course 410, which is about PLC, HMI, and how to secure them, uh, Purdue model, how to work on that. From that sense, I have built my own small uh, traffic control system, and I have presented that in India back in uh, 2020 in Loyola College. So I felt like I have a connection with this field. I'm not doing fully ICS, but you know, yeah. times to times, you know, I follow your uh, you know tweets and uh, right. videos. So on that uh, field, this is what I'm interested. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we speak, uh, Dr. Sridhar uh, yes. from University of Bristol. Could you Hi, introduce yourself? I hope yourself? everybody can Please. hear me. Uh, hi everyone, I am Sridhar Adepu. I am a lecturer at University of Bristol. I am part of the cybersecurity group. 
my research around industrial control system security. Uh, I started uh, this field in 2015 and most of my work, experimental work, where I was establishing the and operationalizing test beds in different sectors like water as well as power. Uh, as I showed the pictures like water treatment, water distribution and power. And then I, I, I was also doing much into cyber exercises so where we involved different attack teams and different teams from industries as well as academia, including governments actually. And then, you know, we conduct the CTF events and see how to train the people in this field because uh, as many people mentioned from the previous talks so we have like the ot side you know de developers and the cyber security teams in general they are not talking i think uh, they are not working together i think that is one of the problem in industry uh, when it comes to research side you know i apply foundations of cyber security formal methods and machine learning into safety security and resilience of cyber physical systems uh, from risk assessments and uh, evaluation, uh, uh, reducing the risk assessment, evaluation of resilience and uh, anomaly detection and so on. Good. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Engineer uh, Abdul Aziz Al Hamoud, uh, introduce yourself, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Abdul Aziz Al Hamoud. Uh, I have, I work in. Uh, at Quebec, and I also uh, a researcher in cybersecurity uh, in the field of uh, OT, uh, in addition to the IT. Uh, I have a professional certification as a CISSP, CEH, and CHFI. I have been working on this field around uh, 15 years. And uh, welcome uh, to your uh, questions and answers. You're welcome. Okay. Now I have my notes. Uh, we, we start with Dr. Sridha. Sridha. Uh, but before I ask you, anybody has any question sure. for Dr. Sridha? Before I ask you. Anybody? People, uh, maybe people want to go for lunch, it looks okay. like. <laughs> okay, maybe later. Uh, maybe later. Okay. Um, um, I saw your representation. It's uh, quite interesting. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you you focus too much on uh, on the test uh, beds and labs. Um, so what's the goal of uh, doing uh, that? So the test bed. What what was the goal, the motivation, the objective of doing this? Okay. So. So we, we would like to do practical work, which is directly transferable to the industry. You know, even I'm part of the university. So let's say if we do work in simulation like MATLAB or other simulations, so that is not directly transferable to the industry. And same time, let's say if I'm training people in MATLAB or simulation, and you know they are recruiting them to do like island gas systems how they can work they never touch the device they never touch the plc they never touch the real protocol they never touch the real scada system so it's not possible for someone who trained only in simulation environment and go and work readily for the go you know industries or government and you know some people go for policy making and so on mm -hmm. I, I think we should have a realistic environment to train the people that is the main purpose of, I mean, we are educated, universities are educating the people, right? Yeah. And apart from that, you know, as a researcher, we try to spin out companies and we engage the people as, as part of the smart nation initiatives. We train the government and in industries into OT security. So we need this environment so that we can advance the research. At the same time, we can also translate the same to government and industry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Suleiman, uh, can I add uh, another yeah, question, sure. if it's, it's okay? Go ahead. I just have a question for you as well. From a research perspective, uh, from your side, because you, you're into the research part and the academic part as well, what's the most effective countermeasure for industrial control systems? And how? what, what would you rank? If I told you, give me one countermeasure, you'd say that was the most effective one that I would use from a research perspective. <sighs> I think this is depends on what is the state of the security at the moment any organization is holding, right? 
so I, I cannot judge I, I cannot assume exactly what kind of security state of organization is without evaluating that state but uh, to my mind so I mean SCADA systems and remote desktop sometimes you know in, in island gas to water and power systems we do provide remote access for various reasons for easy management and sometimes operators try to access uh, and even for management purposes so I, we, when we were building this power plant uh, engineer always wants to control uh, remotely the power generation we have two generators this entirely can generate 72 kilowatts it's not huge like you know not not industry scale but for a university setting 72 kilowatts power generation is a big one and so whenever there is a problem uh, engineer do not want to come and work uh, in the lab to you know make it better so he want to have a remote access and and we were worrying that oh you are working in this setup ot setup and you want to have a ot so it is better to not to have a default passwords at least for these settings uh, that is first thing i would say without knowing any of the state of the security at the moment yeah okay uh, mr ali uh, it's very interesting uh, that uh, you are uh, the maybe thinking to develop a project for smart uh, uh, water facility or is it smart what? smart sugar barkia smart sugar barkia everything yes uh, you didn't elaborate enough in the lecture could you tell us more about it yes. how it looks so like and how you implement it and Thank do you, you so have much. the agreement from the i don't have the agreement actually <laughs> it's a dream for me i wanted to implement right. i have been working back in 2018 on the same uh, you know prototype a small prototype it says uh, I used a Raspberry Pi to simulate the uh, you know the traffic lights and use an AI mm. that helps connected also to computers uh, for example to an ambulance or a police station mm. or any uh, control system that controls these uh, things using AI for example and then I think uh, move to uh, water systems Boys. control the water system within Barkia and later to noise system like, for example, if you want to introduce, you know, in February where we have celebrations and these things, how you control the noise system and then how to control the traffic, uh, the crowd, how okay. you, the people will enter. And then I, the major thing I have noticed and while adopting, I have been, you know, sitting there for almost two weeks going every single day to Parkia and I have analyzed the uh, parking is the main issue people yeah. where they are coming the uh, police uh, men where they stop the traffic lights okay. so I have identified for example the parking how to uh, move the crowd to the available okay. parking lots so these things were developed basically on a lab uh, I hope that one day that we will see them okay. controlling everything so uh, okay. maybe let's focus on water because it's very close to ICS more than the rest uh, why do you think uh, you need to make a, I mean, develop water system there. W why do you think you want to do this? And I want to, the, you know, first uh, avoid any water waste, uh -huh. okay? Uh, use the water for, you know, building a fountain, control it, uh -huh. uh, use that water system on a free w water fountain, a free decoration fountains, uh, control any waste will okay. happen during, you know, if we are using these uh, types of things in Barkia. Okay, so will you use uh, industrial devices to for the water uh, uh, I was thinking to have a PLC, for example, a controller, you know, to control these, and the admins, the operators will have, you know, connected to, mm. let's say, Ministry of Works. Mm. They have directly a pipeline mm. under the, uh, you know, next to the parking where there's the underground, okay. and it's connected directly to Mbarkia. Uh, maybe it will be connected also, you know, from the sea where we have... Uh, you know, these uh, things, refineries, and directly comes sure. to our, uh, to Mbarkia directly, and how we control them, uh, time to close, uh, when it, when you close it, when you open it, okay. based on what, and these things. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dari. Uh, um, when you mentioned the challenges for uh, implementing OT's cybersecurity, uh, you, you mentioned four uh, categories or four. Yes. Uh, do, do you think these challenges apply in everywhere or just maybe in Kuwait? 
actually the challenges were uh, based on uh, knowledge yeah so we had deficiency in knowledge at that time so the more we became mature as an organization the more we understood how to protect ourselves mm -hmm. so today if you tell me to start a, a new cybersecurity program it would be much more efficient easier clearer to the mm -hmm. point and very uh, organized in, in, in that manner. And the standard, the 62443 standard, is a great standard to uh, adopt, to learn from, and uh, to use the tools that are available in the standard as well, mm. such as the CSMS. Um, if you ask today what is the highest risk your organization is fa facing today, that would change on a daily basis. So we have to keep updated, knowing what's happening around us. Uh, aware about the uh, issues around us, especially, especially in a geopolitical uh, region as well. And the solutions that we employ <coughs> protect us based on that risks that we have identified earlier. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the key parts uh, which we mentioned. So to organize or to sum up, you have to follow a standard. You shouldn't do something from the start. If you are mature enough to build your own standard later on, then excellent, do that. Mm -hmm. And many organizations do that, but based on their risk tolerance and what they accept as risk or not. So this is how you mature in cybersecurity. This is how you understand mm -hmm. the risks behind it and you add to it. Yeah. Any, any question for Mr. Dari or the guests? Yes, yes, can I ahead. ask a yes. question? Any question? You know, standards come much later yes. when research community know about it for sure, 100% verified and tested. I mean, many, not only once, like yeah. 100 times, then it becomes a standard, right? Uh, by uh, okay, so do you want to follow standard? That means there are people who are, who are a, much ahead. So if you are, there are research people, and the, of course many governments, they might have many num different things which they are not revealing. Of course, number of reasons. So they are also ahead of yeah. the standards. So if you want to follow standards, then how you want to cope up with all these people? Okay, excellent. this is an excellent question, and this is actually a dilemma we face usually. So uh, just uh, to, to add to what you're saying, I'll just give you an example. Like the standard doesn't today, if we open the standard, the 60443, it doesn't talk about vi virtualization, virtual environments. It doesn't talk about cloud computing. So these are emerging you know, technologies that are well established in the IT uh, sector. However, it's really difficult to implement in the OT sector. Mm. So what do we do in this instance? We evaluate. We evaluate the opportunities based on the threats that we face. So we, we have to see how we can secure it, put it in place. However, keep in mind, at the end of the day, you have insurance in place. So your insurance will audit you based on the standard. You have auditors in place which will audit you based on the standard. So if you deviate outside that standard, you're deviating out of the game. Unless you have defined and created your own standard and advanced to have a maturity of that level, then you shouldn't do it. So you should have a real understanding of what you have in place, and that's possible, that's allowed in the future. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a chat with you before, uh, Bari. Yes, go ahead. About the virtualization. Yeah. And when uh, Dr. Sridhar uh, talked about digital uh, twins, what do you think about it? It's kind of virtu virtualization, right? Yes. So what do you think about it? Yes. I, I, I'm going to ask you the opposite question. If I get you eggs yeah. and put them in one basket and provided you with these eggs, would you have the risk of breaking these eggs in one basket or would you spread out that risk? What would you think? Eggs, normal eggs yeah. from the supermarket. Yeah. Would you spread? You'd usually yeah. spread that yeah. eggs. So of basically course, yeah. spread the risk. So yeah. when you have all your system in a virtual machine, you're putting the risk on top of a risk on top of a risk. So your oh. risk will be very high. Okay. How do you tackle that risk to bring it down? How do you bring it into an acceptable level? And this is where the key dilemma is. Mm. So to answer your question, for me personally, in my opinion, any service that is supporting the OT environment, uh, for in our terms, it's called level three and above, mm -hmm. I would allow uh, virtualization. But anything in level two and below, I would prefer each one separately because the damage can be done only on one uh, server rather than having the damage on all the servers at, at once. 
And we okay. can see today the vulnerabilities. I can easily show you vulnerabilities in VMware and, and yeah, HyperX yeah. and all of the virtualization technologies nowadays. Yeah, okay. So the vulnerabilities are there. If one yep. gets spoiled, the other will be spoiled as well. So you have to keep that in mind before you take that decision. Sorry, when you mentioned level, yep. is it technology readiness or what levels okay. you're referring so, to? So in, in, in level, I'm talking about the Purdue model, uh, okay. where we have the, yeah. Level uh, zero is the transmitters, okay. level one the controllers, yeah. two. Because sometimes, you know, somebody might say that, okay, oh, the technology readiness levels, you know, we have like until seven. Yes, that's yeah. a layers. Uh, so it's a, yeah. okay, so it's, it's I layers was confused one to seven. Yes. Thank you. From the OSI okay. model, yes. Mr. Abdul Aziz, you talked about uh, isola isolation. Yes. Uh, could you elaborate on? I mean, how, why it's important and what? And uh, yes, of course. Uh, you mean the network visualization? So uh, the environment, the IT environment, or the OT environment have a different uh, level of uh, criticality. Uh, let's say if we have uh, uh, at our house, uh, some places uh, can be visited by uh, any visitor. Uh, or guest, but uh, the room which have some money or uh, have some gold, you need to uh, have some security uh, uh, or do not let any uh, unauthorized person to go to this room so uh, you protect your uh, assets. Uh, same thing in the IT and OT environment. Uh, as uh, in the, in, when we talk about the OT, uh, some of OT devices can be uh, very critical as a sensor uh, to uh, sensor which taking uh, temperature of uh, the tank. If that uh, if the temperature of the tank is high, uh, then you need to do an action to reduce the uh, tem uh, tank temperature. Otherwise, uh, it will be uh, uh, it will have a big damage. Uh, so you need to have uh, a good monitoring and good uh, security for these sensors. Uh, in a way that you reduce the risk of other devices. Uh, so you make you make those sensors in VLAN or you make it in separate room in, uh, while the other uh, lower criticality in, in different room. Once, this at, once, uh, once the attack happen in uh, room number one, it will not affect or impact uh, the, the devices in room number two. Uh, th this is this is this in this way uh, you're going to reduce the risks uh, in, uh, in different level uh, and you reduce the impact which uh, might be uh, affect the business thank you any any comments something came to my mind when uh, he was speaking uh, actually nice movie uh, everybody was enjoying i think for your movie uh, the, the question re the question related to is like you mentioned you want to secure everything so that uh, every sensor or every component so how about some people want to in keep honeypots or they they want to keep some unsecured components <coughs> in, into the network or close to the ot environment so that attackers can attack those unsecured components or you know you are deceiving an attacker what do you think about that? Yeah, I understand this. Uh, see, see, honey, honey spot can be uh, can be used in different way, uh, whether to uh, make the attacker be busy. Uh, by the way, the honey spot is something uh, to attract uh, the attacker, to let the attacker attack something that we we want him to attack it, instead of attacking our uh, real environment. So why we use the honey spot uh, in this case, uh, I think, uh, uh, as we said, uh, we're going to let the attacker be busy with uh, something that it's not impacting our business. Plus, we need to know, we need to study uh, which attack, wh where we are targeted or not, not targeted by, uh, by the attacker. 
Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, our analysts or our, our cybersecurity team going to read the information that came from this honey spot and study uh, how to prevent or uh, increase our security. So what I want to highlight, I can see some uh, sign uh, the time is about to end. So what I, what I want to highlight in honey spot is not only to interact the attacker, I also recommend to have the, the insight information uh, came to this uh, honey spot to know uh, the behavior of the attacker and you know if you can also know if there is uh, any uh, uh, any attacker is targeting uh, the uh, your environment um, that's it for today uh, thank you very much Thank you very much once again to all of our panelists. It brings us to the end of our session, so now is the lunch break. Lunch is served up on the third floor. We're going to return here around 2.45 for our final session of the day, which will have a theme of capacity building. That brings to an end my time as your MC. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much all, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.